Hi, friends. Welcome to a new Get Ready With Me featuring Mother's newly released Sunlit Seduction. If you wanna check out my first impressions video, I'll make sure to link it down below in the description box or up in a card above me. I also wanted to make some comparisons to Midnight Sun and Subversive, not swatch wise, but just concept wise. And a lot of ideas have been swirling around my head. And I know my nails are not painted. I'm going to Maddie's house tomorrow and I wanted to film as much content as I could so I don't have to bring my stuff over to Jersey and that meant sacrificing nail painting so I could get on camera you know use my hands and get ready instead of waiting for like another hour or so you know how it goes okay also pulled out some uh, older products for the face and going over how skin fasting has treated me so far so let's come in a little closer so you can see uh this skin <gasps> that's enough if you're like what in the world are you talking about what is the skin fasting one of my close friends in the close friends membership on my channel kb mailed me a gift a book called skin sobering and i had mentioned in my july favors video that i am embarking on this journey of cutting out my skincare completely for 30 days seeing what results that yields and also describing my process, uh, what my experience has been so far, what I'm using. I haven't thrown all of my skincare away, but man, did I get rid of a lot of stuff. It was a multifaceted moment where I was undergoing several emotions just watching the dollar bills pile up in the garbage bags. And then after it was all said and done and I reorganized, I felt such a weight lifted off my shoulders. And now I don't have to worry about replacing skincare or getting back into it or buying more products. And the whole premise behind skin fasting is the fact that skincare is actually uh, ruining our skin. I know ruining is a, a hardcore word to use in that it's inhibiting the skin's natural function to exfoliate, to produce its own, what is called natural moisturizing factor, NMF. And when you put skincare on, it kind of, you know, acts as a tack pad. So dirt and pollutants stick stick more on your skin which will make it tougher to just use water but if you didn't use skincare water is enough to wash off the dirt and pollutants dust whatever is on the surface of your skin but if you use skincare then you have to use a cleanser that has surfactants and a lot of these products that have surfactants because you need that chemical to mix oil and i think it's oil and water together to emulsify those ingredients so it can be creamy and smooth and together and not separate in the product and water is a chemical absolutely so i i just want to make sure you know i i'm not subscribed to the, like you know don't put all these chemicals on my face i know everything's a chemical right and then beauty industry tries to push the whole clean beauty thing on us you know natural versus not it's like all these herbs and lab you know let me start I'm just talking. Going with a peach and lily serum. So basically, all these extracts and natural whatever have to be modified in a lab so it is somewhat safe for you to put on your skin. But in Skin Sobering, the book, they were explaining that skincare is colorless makeup and should be removed at the end of the day and not reapplied and kept on the skin. So when I do apply makeup, I rely on my skincare products, <laughs> the last remaining products that I have, to prep the skin before foundation because my skin is now quite dry. It is undergoing a phase. It's learning how to create its own moisture again. In the meantime, I am using Vaseline to moisturize my skin like a grain amount. Yeah, not a ton. And I use Lye soap to wash my face, not every day. So on a day like today where I am applying foundation that has uh, oils and, and silicones and whatnot that are not easily broken down by just water, I would use the Lye soap. But on days where I don't wear makeup, I would just use water to cleanse my skin. I also have been using mineral makeup as powder can be easily removed with just water. So if I am 
am going past the two day mark, which is I'm trying to keep makeup application two to three days a week and not every day as I've been doing. So I can mostly rely on water for cleansing my skin morning and evening. I just applied my allies of skin peptides moisturizer. Uh, another point about the skin fasting gig is that skin is an excretory organ. It is not designed to absorb, but it is designed to eliminate. So, you know, what you just saw, the peptides and the antioxidants are not actually getting into the skin in a way that the product is promising. It's gonna provide like these building blocks for your epidermis and all that. So, you know, I'm just using it now before foundation because it does help the foundation sit better. Since again, my skin's a little drier. It's interesting. It's an interesting experience. My skin does feel rougher. I knew I was going to undergo a rough withdrawal period. So I'm ready for it. I'm not freaking out. We're just gonna use a Vaseline and gonna apply some house labs. But can I just tell you friends, I, I'm i like going to unsubscribe to all these skincare company emails because I don't need to buy anything. Like I'm done. And I just want you to know this is not from a moral standpoint. I don't feel better than you or anyone for not buying skincare. I'm not a better person because I, I chose not to apply products on my face. I just want to make that clear. At this point in time, August, summer has been very slow. My AdSense is tanking. My online coaching business slowed down a little bit. People are away. People are, you know, it's summertime, right? If I could find a way to save and not buy as much, I'm happy to eliminate skincare. But you could argue like, Alicia, that's correct. You don't have to buy the most expensive thing. Like, I'm sure I could buy some CeraVe cleanser and moisturizer and be good. And that would not cost me more than like, what, 10, 15 bucks. So totally hear you on that if if you were formulating that that uh, argument, if you will. I just decided to cut it cold turkey. It might not have been the best decision. <laughs> it was a rather rash one. Looking back, just saying, okay, no skincare, let's do it. I could have went into the transition a lot slower. It reminded me of when I decided to go off birth control. And at the time, and I explained this during my uh, having been on birth control for a year video, where I realized I ran out of my uh, contraceptive pill prescription. And it was at the point where I could not request a refill because I was past due my examination. So I have to go in, get examined, but by that time, my entire contraceptive pill schedule would have been screwed up. And I thought, why don't I just stop taking the pills? And at that time, it was so radical of a thought because I've been on birth control for over 10 years. It was kind of like, oh, I'm done with pills, get some more. It never occurred to me to get off this uh, medication. And I've been with Bay for a long time. We are sexually, sexually active, okay? So I had this conversation with him like, hey, uh, I'm gonna get off this contraceptive, so let's talk about timing and, and what the future holds for us, you know, in terms of child things and all that stuff. So we had that conversation. He was down, he was like, listen, I'll follow your lead. I'm like, okay, fantastic. Pat McGrath Labs, skin fetish, sublime perfections, head and powder. So I learned more about the cycle and the phases and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So you just can't get pregnant at any time because that's what I thought for the longest time. And I do think it helpful for women to learn about their cycle and just to be well acquainted with the phases and, you know, knowing how the body is designed. I don't subscribe to cycle syncing. I think cycle syncing is great if you wanna learn obviously more about your cycle, what it entails. But for me, what cycle syncing fails women at is a whole like, you just, you do tougher workouts or softer workouts, what have you. And that means you're not lifting every two weeks. And over the course of a year, that's a lot of gains on the table. And muscle, lean mass is critically important, especially for women you know, we are more susceptible to osteoporosis and sarcopenia just based because we're weaker in general. So, you know, not giving our bodies the opportunity to lift 
uh, just because we're in our luteal phase. I think it's silly. I think it's silly and overblown. But anyway, I spoke about this at length in, in other Get Ready With Me's. So back to the skin fasting, it wasn't surprising based on how I decided to just get off oral contraceptives. I just decided to stop using skincare. But what's interesting is I really liked skincare. I mean, I dedicated videos to it and wanted to get into the nitty gritty about it. Learn more about ingredients and all these things. I was heavily invested at one time. And just reading a few passages from Skin Sobering, I decided to just let it all go. I was like, fine. I thought, fine, I'll try this, see what happens. But the, I guess, most appealing part of it is that skin fasting doesn't require any money, right? You don't have to buy anything to not apply (laughs) anything on your face. You just don't do it, right? You just stop using your skincare. And I appreciated the feedback you all provided you know, given the different circumstances, right? If you are in a drier climate, how that might be a little rough for you because the skin will become incredibly dry once you stop using skincare. Another point about water, I think overall from a global perspective, I'm not concerned about the water as much as I'm concerned about the skincare products themselves. I understand Water is not its purest, and although I have a filter on my shower head, I don't have a filter on my faucet. It could be a concern, but I'm not really worried about it because ultimately, I think even the the tap water, what have you, is going to be less damaging than the skincare I would if I decided to continue using, right? So that's how I, I'm i gonna tackle that challenge. But for the most part, let me tell you, it's nice, okay? I go in the shower, I use my little grandma's lye soap, it's called grandma's lye soap, you get on Amazon. I soap up my pits, maybe behind the ears, I definitely wash my feet. Those things gotta use soap, I'm sorry, the feet's gotta use the soap. Between the legs, you know, and then everything else I just rinse with water. I get out and I'm done. I don't have to spend time slathering on any serums, any lotions, any oils. I don't have to put anything on my face. I mean, it's fantastic, it's so great. And I was not ready for that feeling of just, let me just do other things instead. And what I was saying from a financial standpoint, uh, more money for my food budget, which my goodness, between you know me ordering eggs from the farm and raw milk and bison, elk and venison, it gets expensive. So however I can save, you know, and again, all nutrients come from digesting food. You gotta eat the nutrients in order for them to get into the skin from the inside. So I rather much spend my money on that than on some skincare that claims to rejuvenate and what have you and ain't doing nothing. So that's that. Chanel, an oldie, Le Beige, the healthy glow luminous color in deep, quote unquote deep, not the deepest, yes, for sure. I do love the color. Let's see here, I'm looking at my brush options. Let me use this Hokuto Sora series brush. It's angled, soft, and has really nice splay. I love using this because it just fits beautifully into the cheekbones, right? And I adore the color of the Chanel bronzer, for sure. I have not yet bought the newer bronzer cream. I think at one, I forgot, uh, was it my top five bronzer video that I showcased (laughs) that product? And some of you were like, no, the new one is gorgeous. I'm like, oh my God, I can't help it. I just want all the bronzer. Final Surgeons just dropped their bronzer. I haven't gotten it yet because again, I'm trying to hold back. Since I'm not wearing makeup as often now because of my skin fasting journey, I'm less inclined to buy. I also got rid of a lot of old makeup, my gosh. I just wanted to kick myself and ask, why did you give in to the consumerism, Alicia, my goodness? I was, you know, I didn't know better. I just 
was on the YouTube game and I'm like, I need to do this. I'm a YouTuber, beauty YouTuber. I didn't need to buy all that. I surely did it. And now I know. Now we know better. I'm gonna hop into this CoverGirl blush that I uh, bought and I thought it was a beautiful color. Look how bright it is. It's called 345 Hot Frenzy. Bigger brush, however. I want to get a more enveloped uh, application here. I like that. This is pretty. I don't buy a lot of drugstore because I feel people over purchase drugstore and end up just spending the same amount on products that are like, okay, that's pretty. I kept this though, you know what I mean? And then I had the nerve to buy this La Mer highlighter. It is the glow highlighter, is dual panned. One side you got this cream highlighter. So I'm gonna pop that on first with my finger. Very lightweight, very soft nice on the skin and then the other side has the powder part it's actually quite creamy so i would love to pick a brush let me pick my towel house brush that's gonna pick up a, the right amount here and it's like pinky toned it's like a warm pink champagne it's lovely and you know it's low matter they often tout how the you know the seaweed technology whatever their claims are is in the makeup as well so your skin will be transformed when you apply this highlighter is like no it's not it's absolutely not it's gonna be the same <laughs> i'm gonna toss this around for some finishing make sure everything is blended all right that doesn't look too bad Wow, we're so pretty. Complexion is complete, so I thought we could go into the eyes now. And at this point in time, I had just uploaded my sunlit seduction video this morning. This video will probably be up on a Friday or a Saturday. The more I think about it, the more I feel Mothership 11 is not a Mothership. It's more like a luxe eyeshadow palette. Like, how Pat has her Lux quads. This is just like a step above maybe. But when I look at, let me bring them out. Let me start with Subversive. When you see this, you are drawn in, okay? You are inspired. You feel the creativity, what went into this. It is just mesmerizing. I would also argue the same for Midnight Sun. My favorite palette out of all the palettes. So Versa was my favorite at one point, 100%. But I just love the connection to the inspiration of Midnight Sun, the colors here. And I found this to be more interesting. But guess what? This was the palette. I feel like one of Pat's first motherships to go to TJ Maxx on sale. People weren't feeling it. And then they're like, I want different colors. But then those are the palettes that go on sale first. Those are the palettes that don't sell as well. And we get all of this, right? We get the daily friendly, the much safer color story. My goodness. So, you know, just side by side compare it. You know what I'm saying? Like, my gosh. Because the blitz shades from her Holy Trinity uh, mothership rollout are just extraordinary. I think, let me get the card out. Look at Blitz Amethyst. This is a totally different formula from what's found in Blitz Crimson. Blitz Crimson from Sunlit Seduction. Like, you see how it's drier, but it's lighter in texture? So it just adheres to the skin, I think, in a smoother fashion than this Blitz. This Blitz formula is unlike anything I've, is different. I don't know how I feel about it. And then you got Gigabyte. Gigabyte is just magnificent. It's drier. But again, it's just smoother and easier to apply. Now you have VR Pink and Astral Ghost Orchid. VR Pink is like a transform shade, if you will. So you could apply this on any of the metallics, tap it lightly. And the Astral Ghost Orchid shade is like your, your true transform shade. So this is what you would tap on any of the textures in here 
if you wanted to bring out more of the pink. So that's the purpose the Astral Ghost Orchid texture serves because in Sunlit Seduction, these are more like actual shades. I don't consider these to be toppers. So the Amethyst Allure, that's more like a plum, right? But I would just wear that on its own. The Gold Allure, that's like a peach to gold. And now the Pink Fetish shade. I wouldn't be able to use these on top of the other metallic shades. I would just have to rely on these shades alone. They're beautiful, but they don't serve the same like astral moment seen in, in Subversive. Whereas in Midnight Sun, in Astral Solstice, this is like your Stardust shade. It's neutral in color, but you could apply this on any shade to really bring out that reflectivity, the sun glittering on the water type of effect. And I get it, when you go on Pat's IG, they have the hard light shining on these guys, which makes them look ultra impressive. But in terms of versatility, I think that's where they're limited. It's all good though. It's all good though. We're, we're still gonna make some looks. I'll apply my concealer. Not an ideal thing to do, typically. I rather use a dedicated primer. And no, I don't have Mother's New Primer because I bought Sunlit's Deduction uh, surprisingly early with a 30% off discount. Don't know how that happened. But the primer wasn't available, only the palette. The team did send Sunlit's Deduction. I could only assume they included the primer as well. So whenever I get that package, you know, we'll be back on here. First going in with Amethyst Lore. That's probably not the actual name, but that's all I remember. <laughs> on the lid, because I do love me a plum, 100%. I think this is a lovely shade. And all over the lid, I mean, it's just, it's pretty. I'm being careful, however, because since this is drier, I don't want to rely on swirling and twirling as that will drop uh, particles on my under eye, which is already happening, but what are you going to do? So I'm tapping here, okay, and going in with Nude Rose, that pinky matte shade that's more on the mauve side, lightly whipping that through the crease so we can have a more refined blend. Tapping in some extreme vermilion dusk on the outer part of the lid to get a little more depth than contrast there. Oop, a little too much. I'm purposefully using very light pressure I don't want to over manipulate the shadow. I'm just trying to create a, a soft gradient here. Yeah, that's, that seems to be working. We're, we're getting there, we're getting there. But that's lovely. So here's the thing, because the shade itself has that pearl and reflectivity, I don't actually need to apply something else. But just for funsies, just so you see what I'm talking about, okay? Going into Astral Ghost Orchid from Subversive. You see what I'm saying? is gonna bring out a little more of that pink, okay? I don't have that in Sunless Deduction, that's what I'm saying. If I wanted to create another shade moment on the lid, I wouldn't be able to do so because the other actual shades in here are too robust for that to happen. I could go in with the Gold Allure, the Peachy, the Peachy the Peach. Let me grab my uh, Intensifies. This is actually a fantastic product, it helps to adhere or create more adherence for the drier shades so going into this one here right here picking up a flat shader because i need something flat and precise and tapping on the inner part of my eye so that's going to be the highlight moment carrying it here on the lower inner part of my lash line overlapping okay okay let's drag a little bit of extreme vermilion here on the lower lash line so i could have done nude rose but i wanted to get a little more smoke because i can do nude rose like under that right to create some crazy haze and that is the advantage to having a palette, to having shades like these. Because the shades are softer, 
you could create some wicked gradients, right? Like super blown out if you wanted. So that's eye look number one. I'm trying to do something different from my original video. Let's start off with Sienna Mystique. And how about we do a little, a hello, hello, some a hello, eye. let's tap first through the crease and on the outer lid. Cause I think I want to go in with extreme vermilion on the outer and inner part of my eye. So let's tap that first on the outer and then on the inner part of the lid. Being very careful here. I'm gonna pull this out gently so it doesn't escape. You know what I'm saying? Being very careful with this blending. And I should have wiped this brush better. Shame on me. Because whatever the leftover was on the... I had the blitz shade on there is what I'm saying. Can't speak today, my goodness. Tossing a little bit of Sienna Mystique through the crease here. Just to connect those portions. And I'm slowly building, right? So I like to tap and then sketch it out. Yes, now we're building this depth, okay? You know what I also thought about? The golden one. I think the golden one is like an abridged version of Sunlit Seduction. You know what I mean? Because this shade right here, this is the shade. Cyborg Relations, a much better formula. If Blitz Crimson came in this formula, right? Not, not that, I don't know what this is. If Blitz Crimson came in this formula, that would have been a game changer for me. I would have said that Sunless Seduction is still a, a, one of the weaker releases from the Mothership portfolio, but to have Blitz Crimson in this formula, I think it would have gave it a little more, mm. even here, gold etiquette. Like my goodness, I'm running out of space here. So and anyway, anyway, so if you have the golden one, kind of, kind of sunlit seduction vibes, what shall we place on the center? However, well, let me apply a little more intensifies. Well, I didn't apply any to begin with, but we'll place it here on the center. Hmm. Maybe I'll go in with the this shade again, but now this will be the spotlight. My goodness, okay. That's shiny, 100%. It's very pretty, it's very pretty. But I, I still stick with what I said in my first impressions. It is a lovely palette, but one that you don't have to rush to get. You could definitely wait on it. It is gonna go on sale, 100%. And then we get a little intensified here on the inner corner. But what can we apply in the inner corner now? Well, we can do actual pink fetish, but I kind of want to do, you know what? I'll just do skin tense radiance because there's a lot happening on the lid and I rather just keep that, you know, center stage. Skin tense radiance is lovely though. Hypnotic bronze for sure on the lower lash line. I know it's a completely different color, but the color itself is just wonderful. Perhaps my favorite shade of uh, the palette, despite how lovely Astral Gilded Aura is, Hypnotic Bronze is my, my girl. I love her. We'll pop in a little bit, let's see, I need a small, small, small brush, a little bit of Copper Dawn here on the inner lower half and pull it over hypnotic bronze. I think that's a nice combination. I'm just refining the arc here for skin tense radiance and why not lightly popping some on the brow bone on both sides. Yes, yes, yes. That's pretty, that's pretty. I'm tapping a little more extreme vermilion here on our first eye. Okay, that's very nice. Okay, let's apply some lashes and I'll be right back. And here we have the finished look using Sunlit Seduction again. Listen, I, I like the palette for sure. I would use it uh, again and again and again. I shared my opinion on it uh, more extensively in my original 
first impressions video i do think however compared to her previous motherships it's not as powwow it feels more like a luxe eyeshadow palette and not an actual mothership but i understand that some people will love these shades right and what they're doing and how they deliver because listen i love these tones the plums and the rosy browns all together in one palette 100 percent i do feel that you could avoid buying it full price you know what i'm saying as for the skin fasting i believe this is week three we're week three in so we're almost to the 30 days but i'm thinking beyond that i will stick to skin fasting more than 30 days because i think it will take a lot longer than just one month to undo the damage that I've imposed on my skin for several years, you know what I'm saying? And I'm happy to be patient and will continue to use just Vaseline. <laughs> will use water to clean my skin or my soap when I have a heavy makeup day like I have now today. And also trying to condense my filming again to just two to three days a week where whether it's for Instagram, YouTube, or what have you, I'll make sure to fill my content all on that day so I don't have to worry about doing it on several days of the week, right? I could just have it on those two to three days so I can limit my skin's exposure to the soap and still have my four or even five days just with water Washing. But it's been great so far. I definitely love my new routine and also I enjoy just the concept of buying less, right? I think the most sustainable thing you can do is just to consume less, to have less to throw away and to streamline your routine in a way that doesn't require you to use 10 products for your skincare regimen. You could pack more things if you're traveling and don't have to worry about bringing a bunch of skincare and makeup with you. And again, I chose to do this because I'm in a smaller space. My room is not very big. I don't have the luxury of keeping a lot of stuff, right? I don't have the luxury of being a pack rat. And I'm sure you might have experienced this, the smaller space you are working in, the smaller uh, margin for error, right? You gotta put it away or throw it away. For instance, you have that article of clothing where you're like, well, it's not dirty, but maybe it goes in the laundry. So you give it a day, you hang it somewhere, and then all of a sudden you have these pile of clothes that undecided, right? Just laying there. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. That is what I abide by in my room. If I'm finished using it, make a decision, put it away. And now that I have thrown away so much, I'm less inclined to buy more. For the exception, of course, of Pat McGrath Lab releases, Natasha Denona releases, Is A Maya Now is on my radar. I actually limited a lot of PR that many brands that are nice enough to reach out first in asking if I want it said PR, I just don't have the space for it. And sure, I could give stuff away, but then I have to like figure out who to give it to. And then if they send it to me, then I have to try it. Then it's just more stuff that I have to find room for. At the meantime, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. Not that I'm going to become this minimalist person. I, I understand and see the appeal of that. I'm definitely being more conscious of what I'm buying, what I'm keeping, and going through all my makeup, my goodness, I have a lot of, I, my makeup collection is pretty nice. So the notion of buying more and adding on top of what I already own is, is claustrophobic for me. Just thinking about it, like, please. I need to breathe. And the process isn't over. Every day I chip at it a little bit more and I try to get the emotion out of it because I will save a box. And I'm like, why are you saving this box? It don't love you. It's keeping up space. You gotta get rid of it. And there are a lot of beautiful things that were sent to me that for sentimental reasons, I would justify keeping it by some strange argument in my head. 
And two days prior, as I was cleaning out my room and just reorganizing, it was like, why why in the world would you keep this? And is it was one of those things, listen, you cannot afford to keep everything that makes you feel something that is sentimental. Like, remember the time I received this? You can't afford that right now. And in the future, sure, maybe if I'm in a larger space, I could save things again, but maybe not. Even if I have the space, why would I keep something that's perishable, like makeup, just for sentimental reasons? And things that I had for years, years, that I'm like, I could keep this. You have not used this open you didn't even know you owned it get rid of it so that's kind of what i've been dealing with for the last few days and what has been heavy on my mind in terms of consuming and buying and it's tough for me i'm not saying this is easy this is not an easy process uh i'm going from buying everything (laughs) what it felt like to not buying a ton i still do have those urges, those shop urges where, you know, I will add stuff to the basket, but I'll leave it alone. And I try to justify certain purchases and I'm like, why, why would you buy that? Go away, walk away, 100%. I am getting better, but I do realize that those moments of temptation are still there. I talk about this with food, right? We all struggle with something that gives us that dopamine and shopping and buying makeup 100% gives me that dopamine spike. I have noticed though, I'm a lot better, I think, now and I there's so much room for improvement that I wait until I make a decision and I don't buy something right away. Like the Final Surgeon's bronzers, for instance, you know how much I love bronzer bronzer is one of my most favorite makeup categories ever and i love final surgeons products their bronzer colors look exquisite but i know better right i know even if it's just twenty dollars or however much it costs that could go towards my food budget right i have to just keep it a little tighter at least uh, until the end of the summer hopefully things will pick up in the fall or autumn excuse me i bought Isamaya's palette not right away i waited on it it was in my basket and i thought about it i'm like listen i think this is a beautiful palette a palette that i will enjoy and i was correct it's exceptional happy to have it i do have wild star on the radar but i'm waiting right maybe come closer to late autumn early winter that might go on sale at some point but at the end of the day i'll survive without these products you know what i'm saying i'll survive without the eyeshadow palettes i'll survive without them it's tough because in social media you're constantly surrounded by consumerism new products new this new that and it tests you it definitely tests you especially if you're someone like myself who struggles with shopping that you're constantly being gnawed at oh, I look at this it's new it's so beautiful and i 100 percent contribute to that and that's why i'm trying to make a shift also with my content delving into products that I already own and embracing just the notion of using what you have, rediscovering love of a product that has been stifled because of all the new stuff that is constantly coming out. I think about this all the time. At the end of the day, no one will tell me what foundation, blush, highlight, bronzer, eyeshadow I have on my eyes. Maybe for the exception of a few Pat McGrath palettes, you know, the iconic ones like Subversive. But other palettes like this, you're not going to tell this is Sunlit Seduction. You're going to think it's beautiful, but would you be able to pinpoint where these shadows are from absolutely not all that to say family thank you for your patience and just your willingness to share your thoughts on everything that i put out i love to keep the conversation going and it definitely helps me because i think we need to have more conversation and less arguing not that we do that on my comment section i feel like i also want to take responsibility for always or trying to respond in a way that sounds neutral to you that doesn't sound argumentative that doesn't sound defensive or what have you 
because all across the board, I feel in, in different spheres, I feel there should be more conversation and less fighting over dumb stuff. It's just so draining to see people in like IG comments go at each other's throats. For what? You don't even know this person. And for myself, not assuming where someone is coming from and giving them the space to explain themselves, to explain their point, uh, why they feel the way that they do. And I do think that provides perspective and more understanding on my part, right? So whew, we don't, I don't know what I'm gonna film next. I'm thinking about uh, top, I would love to wait until Sonya G drops her Fundamental Eye series set until I do my top 10 Sonya G brushes. I don't know if I want to do top 5 face, top 5 eye, or top 10 for each. That'll be cheating, I feel like. I want to do top 5 for each category because that's going to force me to narrow down my decisions to, to the brushes that are like top tier for me from Sonya G. We got 5... <laughs> Pat McGrath palettes that are mostly pink. Maybe I should do Pat McGrath top five pink palettes and rank them. Not just, obviously there are only five out of the entire collection, but I wanna rank these suckers as to which ones I think are best. Five down to one. I can tell you right now what my number one is. Well, let me tell you what I'm deciding between. It's between Divine Rose 2 and Moonlit Seduction. It's a tough one. Is a tough one, but I'll I'll sit on it. I'll rest on it. And more get ready with me's. More get ready with me's maybe an archival video where I pick out like discontinued old, old favorites that have not disintegrated yet. And yeah, we'll get into it. Let me know if you have any other ideas, fam, down below. I would love to know. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, top seven video, old makeup video, or more comparisons to Sunlit Seduction on my membership channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.